1 Samuel 23. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Eliah. And they robbed the threshing floors. First time that word shows up. And the only other place it's found is Daniel 2.35. Threshing floors. Therefore, David inquired the Lord. Now, that's good. First sign of trouble, he goes to the Lord. Shall I go and smite the Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Eliab. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah. How much more then if we come to Keliah against the armies of the Philistines? Well, there's fear. Then David inquired the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go to Keliah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thy hand. Get rid of this fear. Just go. Take care of the mother. You're the captain. So David and his men went to Keliah which means fortress, and fought with the Philistines. What kind of fortress? It, it's fallen. And brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David smote them, so David saved the inhabitants of Keliah. And it came to pass that Biafar, the son of Ahimelech, fled to David to Keliah. That he came down with the ephod in his hand. Now this ephod is interesting. This is what the high priest was to wear. Exodus 28. Exodus 28. And this is just no ordinary item of clothing. Exodus 28. Verse 6. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and of purple, of scarlet, fine twine linen with cunning work. So this is professionally made. No fashion t shirt. It shall have two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and so it shall be joined together. And the curious girdle of the ephod, which is upon it, shall be of the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold, of blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine, fine linen. And thou shalt take two onyx stones, and engrave on them the names of the children of Israel, six, on, six of the names on the one stone, and the other six names on the rest, on the other stone, according to their birth. First time that word shows up. And it's a reference to a stone. Birth stone. With the works of the engraver, first time that word shows up, in stone, like the engravings, first time that word shows up, of a signet, shall thou engrave, first time that word shows up. Engraver, engravings, engrave. Has to do with this ephob and those onyx stones. The two stones with the names of the children of Israel. Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches, that's the setting, of gold. And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod. This is what was brought to David. For stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. You know what God's telling David? I'm done with Saul. Upon your shoulders is the high priest of the children of Israel. And you as the king. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon the two shoulders of the memorial. And thou shalt make ouches of gold and two chains of pure gold at the ends of the wreath and work. Those chains are the first time that word shows up. Shall thou make them and fasten, first time that word shows up, the wreath and chains, the ouches. And thou shalt make a breastplate of judgment with cunning work, that means professional work after the work of the ephod so just like the ephod thou shalt make it of gold of blue and of purple and scarlet and fine twine linen shall thou make it 
four squares shall be double. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. Square. And thou shalt set in it the settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be sardis and topaz, carbuncle. First time that word shows up. This shall be the first row. And the second row shall be an emerald, first time. A sapphire, a diamond, first time. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, first time that word. And amherst. And the fourth row, a barrel, first time that word shows up. And onyx and jasper. And shall be set in gold in their enclosures. And the stone, stone shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve. According to their names, like the engravings of a signet, everyone with the name shall they be according to their twelve tribes. Now go down to verse 30, same chapter, Exodus 28, 30. Do you know what Ezekiel 28 speaks about? In stones and musical instruments? Check out Ezekiel 28 sometime. And thou shalt put the breastplate of judgment, the Urim and Thurim, which means lights and perfection. They shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord, and Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. And there shall be a robe of the ephod. All right, back to 1 Samuel. So what was all that about? Well, here's this wonderful garment of the high priest. And on that garment is the breastplate which holds the Urim and Thurim, which lights in perfection. And you got in that thing, you got four rows of three stones with the names of the children of Israel written on it. And I've heard there's only like three letters of the Jewish alphabet. So I, I can't quote it completely. And it would be when David inquires that, Because if you look at 22.20, And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Hightub, named Abithar, escaped and fled to David. All right. Verse 6 of our chapter 23, And it came to pass when Abithar, the son of Ahimelech, there he is. And Ahimelech has been killed. When Abithar reads and, and leaves and flees, uh, Saul being killed in the men of Doag killing the priest. He grabs this. He's next in line for the high priest. And when David inquires to the Lord, there is something about that ephod, something about that breastplate. Lord, what shall I do? Bingo, 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 don't get the lights start shining up and start spelling out by the alphabet of the Jewish tribes. And the greatest imitation you've got is game shows. One where you've got the Wheel of Fortune, the letters light up. Isn't that interesting? You've got games, like Simon says, and letters and numbers, I mean, letters and colors light up. Somehow, with this ephod that is mentioned, and when David goes to the high priest, Where's his name? Uh, uh, Biazar. That thing starts lighting up. Somehow answers David. And when it answers, it, David, get over there and kick, save those people. But our pe people are afraid. Get over there and answer them. And save them. And that's his ephod. Now, in another ephod we run, not like this one, ordinary, of gold was when Gideon made the ephod and then they put it on the pole and they saluted it and had the national anthem to it and you know I, I pledge allegiance to the golden ephod of oh I'm sorry I got off track here I'm sorry it became an idol it became an image it became a god you gotta watch out and it was told Saul Someone's always telling Saul that David was come to Keliah. And Samuel said, God has delivered him into my hand. Really? After you just killed all the priests. 
God is going to tell you where David is. Liar. Now see, he's speaking in the name of God. God is speaking through me. God is guiding me. No, you're not. You're, you got an evil spirit. You are against God. God is done with you. Shut up, you false prophet. And God does not slam him down. God does not kill him. God does not put gravel in his mouth. God just lets him speak. And people say, well, what about before? Well, God just, no, God lets him talk. They'll be judged. The Bible says in Matthew, every idle word man shall speak, you shall give an account thereof. For he is shut in. Remember the name of Kelai, it means fortress. He is shut in by entering to a town that has gates and bars. Those are the doors of the city. There are doors in that city, they are locked, and what will happen is, when I get word to them, they're going to shut David up, they're going to lock him in there, I'm going to come in there and kill him. And Saul called all the people together to war. To war. Not go kill David. To war. This is how angry he is with David. This is a battle of kingdoms. The kingdom of Saul versus the kingdom of David. I want Jonathan on, on that throne. I don't want when David hasn't had any sons yet, but we know it's Solomon. I do not want a son of David on that throne. I will wage war. So this Saul becomes a type of Catholic Church. And if you look at the Catholic Church history, they're out there waging wars to further their church, to further their kingdom. To go to Keilah to besiege David and trap him and get him caught and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced. That's the first time and the only other time is Daniel 8, 12. And notice the last time threshing floors was in Daniel. Practice. Mischief against him. And he said to a by far the priest, bring hither the ephod. You see? He's inquiring by the ephod. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, to the ephod. Thy servant has certainly heard that Saul seeketh, come, seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. That war. I will kill everybody in that city to kill David. How do you know that? Didn't he just kill everybody in Nob? He said he didn't do it. He said uh, Doag did. Yeah, but God credited it to him. He killed an entire priestly city now because they helped David. And if he were to come to Keilah and if David was in that city, he'll destroy that whole city to kill David. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Question. Will Saul come down as thy servant has heard? Question. O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, By the ephah, he will come down. So this city that David has helped, that David is in now, he's returned the goods to him, he, he's got rid of the Philistines. There is victory by David. And then said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? Another question to the Lord. Well, what are these people going to do to me and my men? And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up, traitors to victory. David, you helped them, you saved them. But when it comes to Saul, when he comes, they will turn you over. That's a Judas. They're not going to love you, David. They're not going to protect you. They will throw you outside the city gates and say, Saul, take them, leave us alone. Some thankfulness. And yet that's how men treat Jesus. Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and arose again the third day that they may have eternal life. They say, get out of here. We don't want you. 
And they have no respect to what David, they have no respect to what Jesus Christ has done. And there's no thankfulness. There's no victory anymore. Then David and his men, which were about 600. Now 22-2 said 400. He has gained over 200 more men. Where? We don't know. Maybe out of Kelila, you know, maybe on the run. But now he's got 200 plus more men. Arose and departed out of Kelila and went whithersoever they could go. Now here's the thing. All right, they're in Kelila. Here's the city. Ready? Guys, Saul's coming. He's going to kill us. These people of Kelila are going to trade us over into Saul. Phew, everybody just splits where they can go. North, south, east, west, northwest, east, south, everywhere they're going. What a military maneuver. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbear, first time that word shows up, to go forth. So Saul stops. He's not there no more. We've got to gather our troops and got to figure out where is he. And David abode in the wilderness in the strongholds. Plural. And remained in the mountain the wilderness of Zip. This is where he'll spend a lot of his time. And Saul sought him every day. But God delivered him not into his hand. Uh, what does Saul say over here? God has delivered him into my hand. No, no, no. No, he didn't. Holy Spirit put that. No, we're not working with you, Saul. We're working with David. And David saw that Saul... That Saul saw is interesting to read. Was come out to seek his life. And David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. We say woods. It's one group of trees made singular wood. And Jonathan, here's a second chance for Jonathan. And he'll blow it. And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose. And went to David into the wood. How come everybody can find David but Saul can't? Saul gets up, boom, there's David. I mean, Jonathan gets up, boom, there's David. Saul is out chasing him, David's gone. And strengthen him, uh, strengthen his hand in God. So Jonathan's walking right in God. Jonathan has the best interest of David. Jonathan loves David. Jonathan and David are best buddies. God is working with both of them because God let Jonathan find David. And he, Jonathan, said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, now he's a prophet, but not a good one, shall not find thee. David will find them, but Saul won't. And thou shalt be king over Israel. It is now common knowledge. Over Saul and Jonathan. David, you're the king. And that's the problem with Saul. And I shall be next unto thee. David and Jonathan's love is so good to each other. David is going to be on the throne. And Jonathan said, if I were to be there, I'd be right there with you. I won't be the king, but you would put me in some position. And that also saw my father know it. Saul knows that that kingdom is yours. And Saul knows that you're going to treat me, Jonathan, correctly. But that's not good enough for Saul. Saul wants that, that throne, that crown. And they, too, made a covenant before the Lord. And this will show up later on with Mephibosheth. I believe that's Jonathan's son's name. And David abode in the wood. And Jonathan went to his house. Why? Let's go to chapter 20, verse 42. 2040, the first time. 2042. And Jonathan does the talking. 
24:82, and Jonathan said to David, "Go in peace, for as much as we sworn both of us, there's that covenant, in the name of the Lord, Jehovah, saying the Lord be between me and thee, between my seed and thy seed forever." And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. First Samuel 31. And Jonathan said, you and me, we're going to be in that kingdom. Chapter 31, verse 2. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan. I thought he was going to sit right next to David. He went back to the wrong house. He went back to the wrong city. Had he stayed with David, he'd be, he would still be alive. And there's a lot of times Christians go to the wrong place, to the wrong city, to the wrong house, and spiritually they die. It's it's sad. And I I'm in the wrong. Okay, now. So back to our, went to his house. Why? There's no separation. If he knew Saul was wrong, he knew David was right, he knew that David was with was, was God and God was David, he should have stayed there with David. And they too made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Zipharites to Saul, to give them, saying, Does not David hide himself with us in the strongholds in the wood? Somebody telling on David again. In the hill of Hachaliah, which is on the south of Jeshmon. Boy, no one is leaving David any peace. They're always reporting to Saul. He can't hide. Now therefore, O king, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down. And that soul is to kill David. And our part shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. You start coming down, we'll go get him, and we'll meet halfway, and we will have David. Wow. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord. For you have compassion on me. We're in a pity party he had over No one loves me. No one is for me. All oh, these people are for me. Go, I pray you. Prepare yet. And know. And see his place. Where his haunt is. Now it's the first time haunt shows up. That means his dwelling. What do you say when, when you say this house is haunted? Ghosts are haunting this house. That's where they stay. That's where they're living. That's what the word haunt means. It's a dwelling. And who has seen him there? For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. That's the first time that word shows up. And that's a lie. David has nothing want anything against Saul. He wants to get away from Saul. David wants to find an area where he can stay and wait out the death of Saul. And have nothing to do with it. See therefore. And take knowledge. Of all the lurking. First time that place shows up. Lurking. Place where he hideth. First time that word shows up. Them first time in this chapter. Himself. Of course he's hiding Saul. You're out to get him. I'd be hiding too. And come ye again to me. With certainly. You better make sure he's there. And I will go with you. And it shall come to pass. If he be in the land. Israel. That I will search him out. Throughout all the thousands of Judah. I will find that guy. Of all the thousands of people. I will look at each person. Each house. I will find him. This one man is after one man. And they arose and went to Ziph. Before Saul. But David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon. 
in the plain on the south of Jeshu, Jeshimon, Simon, Saul also and his men went to seek him. And they told David, wherefore he came down into a rock, and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. I can always picture that song. They'll be coming around the mountain when they come. They're just circling each other. They're doing roundabouts. And God is protecting David that they do not come together. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul had men compass David and his men round about to take him. They had surrounded David. David has now. They're circling in. And in the middle of that circle is David and his men. Right now, David's done for. He's gone. Here's God. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Hasty, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Invade is the first time that word shows up. I'm about to get David. Oh, man, I'm going to kill that man. I am going to torture him. I am going to get my throat over. Saul, what is it? Uh, the Philistines, are, we, we got to go. Philistines are attacking the people. That's exactly what's going to happen to Antichrist. He's going to focus on Jerusalem. He's going to come into Jerusalem. He's going to have his teeth, this saliva tame, he's killing Jews. And he's going to get word that there's a battle somewhere. He's got to go. And this happens several times in the Bible. That an enemy has come in and then they get word, we got to go. Now you know that angered and ticked Saul off. He is not happy with these Philistines now. Because the Bible says in the previous verse, Saul went on this side of the mountain, David his men on the other side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for the fear of Saul. For Saul his men compassed David, and his, he had him. He had him. Then the Philistines came. The Philistines came to David's rescue and they didn't even know. Sometimes God will use your enemies to help you. That's exactly what God did here. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David, God, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called the place Shelahem, whatever, the crag or cliff of divisions. Hebrews have got some big names. And David went up from thence and dwelt in the strongholds in Gelai. And David's thanking the Lord at that point. 